permafrost, right? So that sort of a thermocarst will develop very fast, and that will not just undermine that little guy, but can spread into the structures uh, nearby. So sort of the media reports like that started to pop up, right? So, all right, so that building cracked, another building cracked, right? So, and let's blame everything on climate. And despite of uh, significant reduction in population, there is a huge shortage of housing. So they cannot demolish buildings, they need to move people somewhere, but that somewhere does not exist. <laughs> The problem for the town or the city that they cannot build this port. Mm. It's more expensive to build mm -hmm. the port, so we have to find a cheap solutions. So it's not being solved yet. We looked at how climate change might affect different infrastructure in the Canadian North or different airports in, in that particular case. In the Canadian North, it's important to, to know that uh, a lot of uh, connections are only possible through air. If one of those airports would not be accessible, or if the runway were to fail and airports cannot land, the communities are pretty much cut off from the rest of the country. This poster presents the geomorphological observation on coastal erosion. And on these pictures, you see here also the, the silt covering the ice. Here you have the ice, which is uncovered by the melting and the waves. And you see the meltwater of the ice, which goes onto the beach. It looks like a very complicated place. Lots of roads, lots of water, all these trails. I'm very worried to get lost. I'm uh, going on, on excursion number 10, and that's about paleo souls. It's good to have a day in between. Don't have any expectations. I'm open for surprises. There is a 100% chance that the orange team will win. <laughs> Like on the road, you like moving forward here.